I only recently got a PSP after years and years of wishing I had one. My friend was able to give me a really good deal on his old PSP and it's honestly one of the best console purchases I have ever made. The main reason I even wanted a PSP was to have a good way of playing Little Big Planet on the go. I mean, I have a pretty new phone, the Samsung Galaxy S10e and it plays PSP games much better than a PSP does, but I hate having to use touch controls and for some games touch controls just aren't even worth trying. One thing that also made me think twice about buying a PSP is actually how I'm getting the footage for today's video, emulating the games on my PC. But the more I thought about it, I'm never going to enjoy or appreciate the games a tiny bit compared to the novelty of holding a PSP in my hands with a UMD game disc spinning in the back of it. There are a few different hardware revisions of the PSP. I have the 2000 which is a little more powerful and slimmer than the 1000. It's got a bit of extra RAM as far as I know but I think the screen is sometimes considered better on the 3000 model. There's a lot of debate on whether the 2000 has a better screen or not so I like to think I've got the nicer design and the nicer screen. There's also the PSP Go which was Sony's attempt at an all digital edition console 11 years before the PS5 and to literally nobody's surprise this thing did just about as good as you would think something ditching physical media in 2009 would do. Then in October 2011 the PSP Street came out with a few missing features. It had no Wi-Fi, so it was literally the opposite of the PSP Go. Out of all of the models out there the 2000 is definitely my favourite. I do personally prefer the look of the Street but it's lacking those features so I wouldn't really get it. I actually enjoy playing the PSP way more than my Nintendo Switch. I just love how small the PSP is. I mean it's called the PlayStation Portable so that shouldn't be a shock that it's very portable but I just love being able to comfortably fit it in my pocket. The one hardware complaint I do have however is there's only one analog stick but in my opinion the three best PSP games are the two God of War games and of course Little Big Planet. I'm a huge Little Big Planet fan and those games only really require the one analog stick so I didn't really find myself wishing it was there all that much. Maybe if I tried some more open 3D games I'd want one but for what I've got out of the handheld it was never really an issue. Even with Assassin's Creed Bloodlines which is a 3D game and I've played it for a decent amount of time I didn't feel the need for a second analog stick on the handheld. I'll come back to games in a minute because first I have to talk about how good the graphics are on this handheld. I mean it really took me off guard. I've heard it being described as having PS2 level graphics that you can fit in your pocket. Some games this is very true others not so much but genuinely God of War goes to Sparta looks nicer on PSP than the God of War PS2 games. My expectations of what the console's performance would be like were very low. I didn't really do much research at all into what the games looked like, I wanted to go on blind and I'm so glad I did. Because the only other handheld I played from this generation was the DSi years and years ago. So that was my level of expectation and every game I've played just shattered my expectation in the best of ways. God of War Chains of Olympus was the first game I, s I decided to give a go on my PSP. The game translates to a handheld flawlessly. God of War in general, I'm on about the old ones of course, just have the most satisfying hack and slash gameplay and there were no corners cut with the God of War PSP experiences other than the fact the games are just a little bit shorter but honestly I like that handheld games are shorter because you'll often find yourself playing them in shorter bursts anyway but if you're looking for a proper classic God of War experience it is all here. You've still got cutscenes for storytelling, you've still got puzzles albeit they're a little easier on handheld, you've even still got all the really satisfying boss take down mini games that you find on the home console. It's the full package and I'm loving writing this script because I've been waiting a while to vent about how good God of War is on the PSP so please check it out. The other brilliant PSP experience I love is Little Big Planet. It's hard to believe I was like 6 when I first played Little Big Planet when it came out on PS3 but I have such fond memories of playing it with my older brother. I think that's what instilled a love for the franchise that has lasted my whole life into me. The good memories of being really young and just playing around with it have stayed with me. Also it just happens to be that I've never got sick of it. So to get a portable version of the game that means so much to me and it's nothing short of amazing. It's just everything that I've come to enjoy about Little Big Planet, but I can fit it in my pocket. Like the levels feel just as creative and fun as they do in the PS3. 
you can still create levels with just as much freedom as you can on the PS3, and playing one level at a time in quick bursts feels so right, and that's not something you can really do on the PS3, considering it takes ages to turn that thing on and off. There are a few little things that Little Big Planet PSP is missing, but that should be expected on a device like the PSP. Nevertheless, I can't really complain considering just how much fun I've had with it. Something I found kind of funny was remote play on PSP, it's really really awful, but I couldn't help appreciate what it was trying to do. Your PSP has a direct wireless connection to your PlayStation 3, and the only thing on my PS3 it would let me use was Spyro the Dragon the PS1 game. I tried digital and physical PS3 games, even a digital PS2 game, and no luck. It wouldn't even let you watch Blu-rays or DVDs from the PSP, which would be a really useful feature. And the game that did work, well, the input lag was unplayable, so I can't really imagine too many people took advantage of this feature back in the day. The reason I brought it up though is because of how entertainingly bad it was. Maybe if your PS3 and PSP were both connected to a really fast internet connection, it might work It might work better than the link directly between the two consoles. I didn't even entertain that idea because of how bad my home Wi-Fi connection is, but if you're interested, maybe give it a shot and see if it works better for you. You might be wondering if I would recommend the PSP to anybody in 2020, and if you're wondering that, you must not have been paying too much attention to this whole video. Of course I recommend it to anyone who's interested in a new handheld system. I mean if you're starting to get a little bit sick of your Nintendo Switch, 3DS, DSi, whatever it is, or you're just looking for a bit more variety to add to your gaming, this is a very smart choice, especially considering how cheap PSP games are right now they're dirt cheap. If it's not a particularly rare title, don't expect to pay more than about £10 or $10. The consoles themselves are relatively cheap. I've seen them range anywhere from £40 to £70, so they won't break the bank. And for about £10, you can find a memory card adapter on eBay. And mine came with a 32GB micro SD card to put in it. And all you have to do is plug that into the system. The library for the PSP is absolutely massive as well. In North America, 606 games were released. You have two Jack and Daxter games in there two God of War games, like I mentioned earlier, three Grand Theft Auto games, a Call of Duty, Ratchet and Clank, Metal Gear Solid, Little Big Planet, Sil Silent Hill, the list goes on and there's awesome games for just about anyone. I genuinely can't praise the PSP enough. It's also known for having really good racing games like Rockstar's Midnight Club 3 and a handful of Need for Speed games. So yeah, that's why I love the PSP. I've only had it a couple of months and it's already one of the best consoles I've ever owned. The exclusives are top class and there are certainly some excellent third party games to be found on the handheld as well. I definitely recommend it to anyone on the fence about buying one, but as always, if you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button as it really helps me out. And if you want to see more videos, all things PlayStation, feel free to subscribe and check out some of my other videos. If you want to keep up to date with the channel on social media, you can find me over on Twitter at AnthonyJGaming. I have a link to my Twitter profile down in the description below, so all you have to do is click on that. I'm also on Instagram as AnthonyJosephGaming and I'm on PSN as AnthonyJGaming. Thank you again so much for watching. Bye.